Welcome to Pro Cycling Bets Top 10 Cyclists, headed towards the Tour de France 2023 edition. These are chosen based on the betting markets, so you can be you can blame us if you want, but feel free to blame Brett, Bet365 instead. We're happy to have debates with you guys in the comments though, so feel free to leave those after watching the video. We're just generally excited for the Tour de France coming so shortly. But before that, we have the Criterium de Dauphiné around the corner generally thought of as a prep race for those headed to the tour. We'll get to see everyone's form and see if everyone's peaking correctly for the tour. But without further ado, let's dig in. And coming in at number one is Jonas Vingegaard, 26 year old Danish from Jumbo Visma. He was first last year in the tour. Uh, he's coming in with Jumbo, which is obviously a well-known top team. He's got the classic background story of he used to be a fishmonger, and he wanted to he wanted to go fall in on cycling. So he left, uh, and he started to really throw himself into cycling. And he was recognized because of his Strava climbs, and eventually got signed by the team. His last win was at Itzulia Basque Country six day stage race in April. His climbing power numbers are through the roof, and so you know there's always been a debate between Pog and and Yum and Vingegaard and who's gonna win. Uh, essentially, Jonas does have better numbers, so uh, that's going in his favor, but of course, Pog is Pog and it's, it's, it's hard, it's a tough competition. So we'll see what happens. He's got an incredibly strong team with, UA with Yumbo compared to the sometimes dysfunctional UAE, which riders have commented that they sometimes are unsure of why UAE, do, UAE is doing what they're doing at all at times. Uh, so we're thinking that Vingard has the you know, leg up in that. He lost recently to Tade at Paris Nice earlier in the year, however. He didn't look that strong, but I think uh, it could be like a Garrett Thomas situation where he's just peaking at the right time for the race. Coming in at number two is Tade Pagacha, 24-year-old Slovenian. Uh, he's from UAE. He recently broke his wrist at Liège Baston Liège after Mikel Honoré suffered a double puncture uh, and Tade just happened to be behind him, got stuck in that crash. And while Tade almost never crashes and usually gets back up if he does, you know, it's pretty hard once you, <laughs> you break your wrist. So we hope he's healing up fast. He recently just got back on the bike. In, earlier in the year, he won Paris Nice and Velta Andalusia, uh, which were two stage races. He also took an attempt at riding the classics in the spring and won RVV, Amstel Gold, the Flèche of Wallon, and potentially would have won LBL, uh, but the crash happened. He can still win the Young Riders jersey, uh, which he most certainly will, uh, no matter if he wins the L jersey or not. Uh, he's often just ridden away this season from the competition, no longer wanting to risk a sprint. And he would have most likely done so this year as well, but the risk is definitely a big red flag. Coming in at number three is Enrique Mas, 28-year-old Spaniard from Movistar. He, known as the, basically the quintessential non-attacker. He's known from the Movistar documentaries, and he's, but he's been showing sparks in recent days and, and years and, and months, we'll say. It's Zulia which uh, seemed to be a prelude this year, to this year's tour with all the major names going. He finished just uh, he finished fifth behind Vingard, Landa, and Gadu, and also sixth and fifth respectively at Terreno Adriatico and Andalusia stage races. We, we're expecting another similar performance from Moss again around fifth, but we have a soft spot for him and we'd love to see him perform better. Il Lombardia last year was probably a standout race for Moss where he finished just behind Pog, you know, threw an attack there, it looked pretty hot, and it was just on the finish line that Pog beat him. We would love to see that again. Coming in at number four is Jai Hindley, the 27-year-old Australian from Bora, Hansgrove. He won the Giro in 2022, but he did not perform superbly at the Vuelta in 2022. It could just be the difference in terrain, where the, the climbs, the puncture climbs in the Vuelta didn't really suit him, but we'll see. Life in the Peloton, a podcast, recently had a, a great uh, segment on with him where he spoke of how he forced his way into the European scene. We highly recommend listening to that if you haven't already. Hindley had a poor classic season and not a superb early stage race season. 
compared to basically everyone else on this list. He was 8th at Catalonia, 15th at Torino Adriatica, 13th at Volta Algarve, and 16th at the Tour Down Under. Not super strong performances, but we'll see. Maybe, again, peaking at the right time. Coming in at number 5 is Richard Carapaz. He's 30 from Ecuador. He's on uh, EF Education First, and he's one of the last remaining South Americans who hasn't been yet banned. We're just joking, but... Uh, it is true that the loss of Miguel Angel Lopez in Quintana uh, has opened the Tour de France field up a little bit. And we're unsure, to be honest, if anyone actually uses Carapaz's first name, which is Richard. But we'll, uh, so we're going to be keep calling him Carapaz here. He recently won the Mercant Tour Class Alps Maritime, a mountainous one-day stage race, which honestly we need a lot more of. There's too many one-day stage races that are Rouler and Poncher heavy. Uh, he looked really weak early in the year at Velta Catalonia, but he showed slightly better form at Zulia before DNFing. Potentially peaking at just the right time too. We've been saying that a lot for a lot of these riders, but Tour de France is the largest rider of the year. EF maybe wants to switch out uh, him for Healy, but we'll see. Tau and Hart, we're gonna skip over. He's coming in at number six, but uh, because of his broken hip, we don't think it's going to heal on time. We believe in Pog's wrist healing, but not Tau's. Heart goes out to him. Hope he heals up quick. Rumor would be going to Trek. We'll see. Uh, coming in at number six then is David Gadou, 26-year-old from France on Groupana FTJ. He's known as the Smoocher from Garrett Thomas Watts Occurring Podcast, given he was seen smooching his girlfriend in the airport. He's French, and so we usually find riders perform better at their national races that are hosted in that country. So he's performed well in one-day races in the spring. Um, fourth this year also at Itzulia Basque, behind uh, Mikel and Jonas in April. But ahead of Jonas and just behind Tade uh, at Paris Nice, where he showed remarkable form. Second at the Giro last year, just behind Jai Hindley, but performed better at La Velta than Hindley in 2022, probably because of the punchier climbs uh, that were there at the race. He won three of those stages there as well, which was pretty impressive. And look out for him on Bastille Day, which is the holiday that all French come out for, especially to watch the tour, and, and, and French riders typically perform very well. Then we have Thomas Pidcock coming in at number 7, 23-year-old Briton from Ineos. He's probably spending too much time mountain biking these days and prepping for the Olympics, to be honest. But he had a great classic season, was second at liege Bastogne liege third at Amstel Gold, suffered a concussion at Terreno Adriatica that kept him out of some of the major stage races but seventh overall at Algarve early in the year with a win and recent KOM during a training camp in the winter. Uh, he, he's gone down in history since last year. He won the 2022 Alpe de Huez climb, which is a famous climb from the Tour de France. Coming in at number eight is Mikel Landa, 33-year-old Spaniard, still kicking despite his age, which while cycling has gotten younger and younger, 33 is now considered old, apparently. Bahrain uh, is his team. He's a, he's a great climber and he's consistent too, which is what we like about him. He's third at GC at the Giro in 2022 and 2015, fourth at uh, GC at Tour de France in 2020 and 2017. He looked great at Zula this year, finishing second between Vingegaard and Gadou, but quite quite since then, uh, not not too much has happened. Didn't race many of the classics, but those that he did finish, which was one, was La Flèche Wallon, and he came third, which has a you know final climb at the end, uh, showing his strong climbing capabilities. He also had a strong early season compared to some others. Uh, at Izulia, he was, uh, other than it, at Izulia, Izulia didn't perform very well, but he was 5th at Volta Catalonia, 7th at Terreno Adriatica, 2nd at Velta Andalusia, and 7th at Volta Valencia. Coming in at number 9 is Wout van Aert, the 28-year-old Belgian uh, from Jumbo Visma, the machine able to output 400 watts for hours on end, apparently. He'll most likely be riding support Vingegaard, but will probably also be going for the green jersey, which he took easily last year. Uh, with Seguin, a previous green jersey winner, saying that he is incredible. 
and that is probably an understatement. His classic season was superb, only hard done by because Pog decided to take up classics riding for the year. He was third at Perry Roubaix, fourth at RVV, second at uh, Wang Velgem, uh, which in, had this whole spin off called Welt, Weltgate because he gifted it to Laporte, a teammate at the finish line. He was first at E3 and third at Milan San Remo. He only did one stage race this year and he came 53rd, but it was because he was working for, for Roglic. And finally, coming in at number 10 is Egan Bernal, uh, the 26-year-old Colombian from Ineos, previously won GC of Tour de France in 2019 and Giro in 21. With Tao Gegenhart, another Ineos member most likely out because of the broken hip, he'll probably be the second horse in the race beside Pidcock, or actually the main horse, we'll see. Uh, he's at 67 in the betting market, so not a bad time to get in on him. Uh, coming back from multiple injuries though, first a back injury last year, and then he crashed in the winter on his TT bike training in South America. Uh, he also got facial reconstruction surgery, which was pretty interesting, kind of reshaped his nose potentially to be able to breathe better through it. Um, we're hoping that maybe that will pay off for him in the tour. He was recently eighth overall at Tour de Hungary in May and eighth in GC at Tour de Romandy and just a few weeks earlier in April, which is exciting given that he had extremely poor showings at Zulia, Catalonia, and even Veltra Sanyon, San Juan in South America early in the year. Though to be fair, he had one good race at San Juan before his knee gave out later in the race and finally we have our dark, dark horse which is Matthias Skelsmoles 22 year old Dane uh, he's on trek who's still at 251 odds and we think he's a strong dark horse to be honest he came second at La Flèche Roulant and trek doesn't have another huge name going for them on the team so we think they could be riding for him um, and at Flesh, he was finished just behind Pog and just ahead of Landa, two of these other names on this list. Overall, though, we hope you're excited. We hope, because we are, and we hope that the tour proves to be a complete success and that Pog's healthy and that everyone has a great ride. Uh, no matter what happens, it should prove to be interesting. Please like, comment, Tell us that you think someone else should be on this list. Tell us that you think someone should be removed from this list. All your thoughts, we're happy to debate in the comments below. Thanks for watching. Like, subscribe, the usual jazz. Feel free to check out the site for all the best odds. Cheers.